Howdy guys, welcome back to Netty Garage. In today's video, we have a clean title E92 M3 that we are rebuilding. This bad boy actually rebuilt a while back for my boy Nick, and we actually uploaded it on our second channel, but honestly, we decided to want to re-upload it on this channel just because a lot of you guys didn't get to see it, and that car really deserves some attention. It was the cheapest M3 we've ever purchased as a whole group. He actually drove it from LA to here with the whole rear end smashed in. I don't know, that's this dude. He did something I would never do, but all power to him. He got the car here. We ended up fully sorting it out for him. So not only did so you have the cheapest E92 M3, but it's also a really sick spec. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's just get right into it. Guys, we are here with an E92 M3, and this one is just such an interesting E92 M3, mainly because uh, I talked to my boy, I asked if it's okay to be transparent, because I like to be as transparent as possible on my videos. Uh, but this is what this is right here is not a salvage title, it's a clean title E92 M3 that my boy Nick picked up for, you wanna tell him? $7,500, but wait, you can't film it yet. It looks like a poopy pile of crap. Wait, we're gonna try to... <laughs> I might have to break the bumper. <laughs> Basically, uh, one of the splitters fell off earlier. You guys saw it in the last video, kind of like a little sneak peek of it. But yeah, basically the reason why I was only 7,500 bucks is uh, because of this. Like the damage, uh, it's it's not terrible. It's not terrible, but it's definitely there. And I definitely think we can get this thing fixed and up and running. This bad boy has 200,000 miles. It's a clean title California car's entire life. And it was maintained uh, by an, an older guy, right? Yeah, he owned it for 10 years. He put 150,000 miles on it. And he literally has a title that says 47,000 miles on it. Right now it's like 204, right? Yeah. 204,000 miles on it. So I just wanna show you guys how much a 204,000 miles E92 m3 has aged because this thing needs a lot of work and in the next probably like week or two i'm gonna make uh one video behind the scenes on this car fully restoring it uh because again this car definitely deserves to be restored this is nick's first m3 he's definitely gonna be enjoying it and uh, honestly there's some things about it that make this thing pretty unique which i'm pretty excited to show you guys this particular car was very well taken care of i am happy to say that we have actual paperwork on this car that the throttle actuators have been replaced and actually not only replaced but upgraded um so they're pretty much almost a lifetime and then also the rod bearings on this car has been done just recently as well again with paperwork and everything and i think you have like a folder this thick right oh yeah here's the actual proof of the the rod bearings these are the original rod bearings which actually were not in bad shape this car was warmed up uh pretty well its entire life and uh, again he had a folder this thick of documents for this car which is really crazy the previous owner basically got rear-ended by a car that didn't have insurance or the person didn't have insurance they were only able to pay up half of the damages on this car so he took half the money and uh he decided to just i guess buy another car and this one was just kind of sitting actually he drove it to you to pick you up at the airport yeah um so he drove it to him to pick him up from the airport nick literally flew off from Denver to the airport, um, the LA airport, bought the car. He was picked up in this car and then I drove it all the way to here six and a half hours later. And uh, long story short, again, the, the, the previous owner uh, got half the money. He couldn't really fix the car. He couldn't total out through insurance. So he basically just had a rear-ended car. He just wanted it gone. He just wanted it gone. And when Nick actually saw this car, I was like, bro, if you don't get it, I'll have to get it because this is an absolute killer deal. Um, again, for an E92 M3. And again, let me show you guys the options this thing has. Does need a lot of love, does need a lot of work, but I think once we're through with it, it's gonna be a beautiful Silverstone E92 M3. I mean, just check that bad boy out. So guys, to show you the first couple of things, this car does have this shadow line package, which is again, really nice for the for the price we got this car for. It's not a base, base, base model. We have the shadow line mirrors, the shadow line trim. Unfortunately, there are little things like this that's around the, you know, the entire car with issues. Uh, we got a carbon fiber roof, which you didn't even know until you actually came to pick up the car, right? So that was kind of cool. Now, unfortunately, um, there is a patch right over here that the previous owner tried to repair on it, but just ended up making it worse. So we're probably gonna go ahead and get this thing restored. In the front windshield, it is an OEM BMW windshield right over here. Now coming around to the driver's seat, um, there is a lot of wear. So we are gonna be on the lookout for two front E92 black seats. Over here as well, there is a couple scratches. This door card definitely needs to be replaced. Um, not really looking too, too, too good. Again, the interior definitely shows its age for 200,000 miles. But what's kind of crazy is the steering wheel though is absolutely 
absolutely mint condition. The leather is perfect. A good cleanup is going to make that thing look absolutely beautiful. Um, the trim, though, unfortunately, does have some wear on there. Just so you guys believe me, uh, check out the mileage on this thing. 204,000 miles. Not kilometers, guys. Miles. That is kind of crazy. Now, this car does come with heated seats, which is super nice. Nick, uh, the, literally the, the day he got it from LA, before we actually drove back here, within like the hour that he had it, he installed a CIC unit because why not, right? I want my Bluetooth media. <laughs> So he installed the CIC. Um, he didn't upgrade the controller yet because you do have to replace the trim, so he didn't have that. But I believe, I forget, actually press this right now. This is an 08 car with a 2011 navigation. AC works, everything works right here. As you guys can see, this button's out of place. We're probably gonna pop out this trim and get that button fixed. Right over here, you guys can also see that this dashboard's actually extended leather black, which is kind of crazy. And this dashboard is extended leather black, which I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I have never seen an extended leather dash or extended leather interior in black. I've never seen it before. So it's kind of cool to see right here. This car does come with the EDC package, but it is busted. The car is running very stiff right now. Um, looking at the doors, individual sound system, which is super cool to have again for a budget car. Um, so that's super nice. Headliner does need a lot of love. Let me go ahead and show you guys the headliner. <laughs> It literally looks like a wave. So we're definitely gonna have to swipe out all that stuff. This car, because it's a carbon roof, it's gonna be kind of hard to find a black headliner. But once we do, we'll swap that out. We also need some sun visors, swap those out as well. And yeah, just throughout the entire car, it just honestly just really needs a really good cleaning. And then we're gonna start swapping some things out and just getting some new parts, restoring this car because this is an E92 M3 and uh, V8s are becoming extinct. We gotta save them all. Let's go ahead, start restoring this bad boy. The first thing this thing needs um, is just a really good detail. So months have gone by and since then, you've been back in Denver. Yes. The car has been sent off to the shop. It's been yes. dialed in. I have a little bit of clips here and there that we're gonna throw in probably like right now for you guys. I've actually taken the car to the paint shop, take it to the frame shop, take it to the body shop, all that good stuff. It's all been sorted for the most part. But we have all this stuff that Nick decided to go above and beyond on <laughs> in terms of getting this 200,000 miles, just exactly 200,000 or how much miles on it? 203,000. 203,000 miles, E92 M3, clean title back on the road and he's gonna he plans on ripping this thing like crazy so he decided to literally order every single thing you could possibly find on fcp or on a bunch of other websites for this m3 and we're gonna do it all in this video for you guys so this guy's gonna get a full rebuild refresh all in this one video so if you guys are excited for that make sure to smash that like button and stay tuned
So moments later, guys, we have the rear bumper finally on the car. We went ahead, also drilled out the holes for the PDC sensors. We actually had the shop draw out the holes. I went ahead, added OEM brackets, OEM sensors. All that's hooked up now, so all that's looking really good. Considering the fact that this thing was rear-ended, the gaps are looking super good. Everything's paint match, and everything's just honestly looking pretty phenomenal. Now, at this point, we are at that point where we do have to also... This is a new trunk because the other trunk was damaged. Um, this wiring is probably going to get done tomorrow. Same video, but tomorrow for you guys. I mean, for us. And uh, right now, we're actually planning on working on the suspension just because you have the, re the rear end of the car up off the ground. This thing needs a whole new refresh just because it's 200,000 miles. Typically, if I pull the Norway, I'm probably just going to leave that. But we're pulling the Nick way today, so. It wasn't that much. <laughs> <laughs> he spent a little bit of a fortune, but we're gonna go ahead and refresh all the suspension So this car is gonna drive as if it did off the showroom floor. Hopefully theoretically. That'd be pretty sick All right guys, so hours later it is literally nighttime. I think it's like 9 p.m. Right now um, we finally finished both sides of just the rear suspension because honestly, it was such a pain in the butt. Let me show you guys what we ended up replacing. Um, so this upper control arm right over here, let me get a flashlight going for you guys. So that upper one's been replaced. As you guys can see, that one's been replaced as well. And then that one right there has been replaced. And we also added some nice Bilstein shocks. So yeah, bada bing, bada bang. Everything's looking really good suspension wise. Both of the rears are finally done. It was honestly a pain in the butt. Tomorrow, I guess we'll actually hop on those. I didn't realize how long that will take us, but let me see what time it is. It's really 8.30 right now, kind of crazy. Life of S65, bro. <laughs> Breaking parts left and right. Breaking my wallet. Breaking my wallet for real. So this is the next day. Nick went ahead and actually removed a bunch of stuff on the top of this motor. He's, he's pretty much trying to get these valve covers both removed. Has he's actually trying to remove everything. Um, this little vent, is it not a van the, the What's it called? The um, PCV valve. PCV valve. Uh, went ahead and just literally snapped off. So that could have snapped off at any moment. So luckily, we went ahead and sourced one of those locally as well. So we're we'll replacing that. And we'll be taking off the valve covers, replacing all the seals and gaskets, fuel injectors. Um, we're going to be doing some things inside the motor as well to protect it and preserve it. So again, a lot of things that be going on underneath here. We're just kind of get all the surface level things out of the way so we can show you guys what we're exactly doing to revive this beast all right guys so right over here as nick's actually you know working on the top end of the engine he showed you guys what he was working on uh i went ahead and actually started the front end suspension of this car this thing really needed a fresh new tune-up all the bushings are pretty much ripped so we have a brand new bilstein shock in here um we have brand new control arms oe control arms so we have the front control arm replaced the rear control arm replaced we have the uh, sway bar end link and then we also have the tie rod so all that's been refreshed all that's been new um this this rotor maybe should be replaced as well, but it, it, it's good for now. Uh, let's just go ahead and stop on the wheel and then we are good to go. So guys, hours later, it is literally 8.30 right now. If you have to see my phone, 8.30 p.m. And that is the time that we're actually starting to work on his E92 M3. This thing took an absolute big fart on us, not to mention like the, the, just everything kind of went wrong today. But end of the day, we got everything we need to get this thing back on the road. And we are in such a time scrunch. We have to get this thing fully assembled in the next six or seven hours because Nick's going to be taking this thing basically 20 hours to Denver straight driving, which is gonna be absolutely insane. So we're, te we're definitely gonna be testing our mechanical skills right here and uh, this full build um, and seeing if it honestly, it'll make it with no hiccups. That is honestly something we're both hoping on. The fact that the coolant dumped and now it's not dumping anymore is a little strange. Um, the fact that the starter was working yesterday and is not working today is a little strange. And the fact that the throttle actuators was working last week and all of a sudden doesn't wanna work anymore is a little strange. So hopefully, hopefully, once we get everything sorted right now, this car will be 100% ready. Nick did 
did actually go ahead and knock out all the other maintenance on the car. So for the most part, honestly, once we actually do these throttle actuators and everything else, he actually has the rod bearings from the previous owners. So they were definitely replaced. This thing should pretty much be bulletproof. So fingers crossed, after getting these next couple of hours into the car, this thing will be ready for the drive, but I guess only time will tell. So we'll keep you guys posted, but without further ado, let's go ahead and rip this engine bay apart one more time and get these throttle actuators installed and not to mention the starter because, because that's what honestly left us stranded. So yeah, while Nick's actually working on this stuff right over here, the throttle actuator, starter, and a brand new actually thermostat as well, I'm gonna be working on fully assembling this trunk, fully assembling all this stuff and working on all the gaps and just getting this thing fully situated so he can put his luggage in here and take this thing back. So let's get into time-lapse mode and just start knocking things out. Guys, check this out. This thing is flaming hot. This has been a rebuilt. So clearly the actually the previous owner did. Oh my God, bro, the pipe and hot. What do you think I'm dealing with? Bro, they are so hot. So this definitely was rebuilt. If I shake it, I don't know if you guys can hear just a bunch of things moving inside of it. And I'm pretty dang sure this isn't supposed to just fall out of there. Um, I've never, yeah, that, that, that's a no go. So whoever that rebuilt these, Oh my god, bro. Things just keep falling out of it. Who rebuilt these? Is there a name on it? Rebuilded? I have the receipt if you want to put them on blast. But that I'm not really trying to put anyone on blast. It's just kind of crazy that they rebuild them. I mean, they do offer a lifetime warranty, but since they're in LA, we just... Oh, such a shame. Anywho, thank the Lord. That was our smoking gun. Super happy about that. The next smoking gun was... Uh, what was the other smoking gun? Well, we got the oh, 2023. look at those. 2023. That looks gorgeous. The next thing was, it turns out, oh my god, bro, look at that puddle. Oh my god. So, it turns out, you replaced the thermostat. So, when you're exhausted and have been working for 12 or 15, however long we worked <laughs> yesterday, and you're too lazy to properly clean the, the thermostat housing flange, you get a puddle of coolant in the valley. And basically what happened is all that coolant went back to the starter, which is literally the starter sits right there. I don't know if you can see it. That is the starter sitting right back there. And basically, after installing the thermostat, we flooded our starter, and that's the reason why everything started kind of failing at the same time. Our coolant leak, our starter, and who knows, honestly, even possibly our throttle actuators. Possibly, possibly. But to be honest, this looks like this disintegrated from the inside. This is not, I mean, this is not even wet, actually. No, this was sitting kind of high. Yeah, no, they're on studs. This isn't even wet. So, separate failure, but again, just kind of crazy. I don't even know how does that I've never actually had a thought actually looks like this. That is crazy. Anyways, good news is we figured it out. So without further ado, let's go ahead, swap out both those thought actuators, replace this thermostat, and get to that starter. So hours later, guys, Nick is still working on getting those things out, and uh, I'm actually starting on the roof. We pretty much got the trunk pretty much fully lined up. I swapped out the lock on there, got the BMW logo on there. If I go ahead and open the trunk as well, we actually put in all the liners. I did throw in the extra uh, carpet right over here, but as you guys can see, all this is fitting perfectly. For a car, this, for a car that got rear-ended, honestly, everything sat absolutely perfectly. Super happy to see all that. Went ahead and slapped in some extra things in here that he's going to be swapping out once he actually gets back. Again, we are in a super big rush, and that and the number one priority obviously is getting this thing driving but honestly while he's doing that because honestly it's a one-man job you don't want two people in the engine bay one man is good enough for the engine bay i'm gonna go ahead and do what i do best which is wrapping roofs this thing has a super bad uh carbon pretty much like peel to it right here it looks like he actually tried repairing this area but instead made it a whole lot worse so what we're gonna go ahead and do is sand down the areas that are super rough and go ahead and just wrap this complete roof in gloss black. Now obviously, eventually, Nick is probably gonna go ahead and get this thing refinished in carbon fiber, but in the meantime, uh, wrap it in black because it looks a whole lot better than this. This just looks terrible and we don't have time right now uh, to get that thing repaired properly. Guys, it is 1225 right now. I really don't know what we're still doing here. We really need to make sure this thing gets on the road. Nick actually got the new starter installed. He got the throttle actuators installed and the new thermostat installed. So pretty much it's just reassembly time. And I went ahead and also finished the roof on this car as well. I think it came out super nice. So we got the gloss black roof. The unfortunate thing is that this little section part of the clear coat of the carbon fiber roof is really showing through it. But honestly, if you stand like from right here, you can't really tell anything's going on with the roof. Maybe the camera can pick it up because it's better quality than my eyes. My eyes are kind of blurry, you know what I'm saying? For the most part, this thing's looking so much better. Super happy in how it came out, especially from the driver's perspective. This thing looks super sick. At this point, the trunk is fully assembled, which is 
is the place of impact. So technically the repairs of this car is 100% pretty much done. We do need to reconnect the PDCs. Other than that, um, yeah, the roof is done. Uh, what else? The interior is pretty much good to go. We just need a headliner, not a big deal. And like I said, hopefully in a little bit here, all of this will be reassembled. So a couple more hours later, we have the plenum and everything else fully assembled. I mean, not really fully assembled. We left a couple things off. We want to go ahead and give the car its first startup before tidying up everything else and seeing if these throttle actuators actually work, if we have a half check engine or everything is gravy in the Navy. So that being said, guys, hopefully it starts up, which means our starter would be good if it does. And like I said, if the check engine light is gone, that's a great thing. And that means our throttle actuators are working. And if we don't see any coolant leaks, which means we did our thermostat properly. And we did actually notice that there was an O ring that was cracked that's probably the lead cause for the coolant leak this is nerve-wracking it is finally the moment to see if all of our work at this night was worth it all right guys moment of truth hit a nick Okay, startup looking so far so good. We still have a half check engine, but that could be because, oh. But the belts are a little wet. Is the RP, oh, but the RPM's yeah. at 6,000, which means that both of them are working. I think you just need to go ahead and clear the codes. It might be good. Earlier, this car would not be able to pass 4,000 RPMs. That's because one of the thought actuators was bad. So that's kind of a hint of finding out if a thought actuator is bad. Um, at least one of them if basically your car won't even pass 4,000 RPM. So yeah, so far it unleashed full RPMs, which is kind of good. We still have a chick engine. Could be because you have to clear the codes, but so far so good. Looking pretty promising. So just like that, guys, this thing finally doesn't have a check engine light. No lights in the dash. Starts up no problem. Super happy. My, my man can finally go home. He had his entire trip kind of planned for tomorrow. And so many things got in front of our way. But thankfully, we still knocked it out. It is 2 a.m. I'm super stoked to drive back home right now. I'll try to have him send us some pictures once he actually gets back to Denver. But again, super happy how everything actually went down. But without further ado, I think it's going to have to conclude the video. Again, if I have some extra footage or photos, I'll throw it in here. best part of this uh, uni 2 m3 no lights no errors no nothing just crossed the uh, 206,000 miles and it's still going strong so even the trunk it's unlocked all the carpeting is clean and then fits as oem nothing's cracked everything's good to go soak up the original license plates then the original rod bearings back here so Alrighty guys, and that is the end of the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I wasn't in the video too, too much, but Nor Nick knocked out that E92 M3. It is looking really sick now. He ended up fixing it here in Sacramento and drove it all the way back to Colorado. All in the matter of like a day and a half. So he went pretty crazy. Uh, at the end of the trip, he actually hit some hail. So his, the M3 ended up getting hail damage right after we rebuilt it. So that kind of sucks, but he is still rocking it over there. He is fully enjoying that car. He did a lot of maintenance, as you guys saw, spent a lot of money, but now is currently enjoying a clean title E92 M3 that we all rebuilt. So that is very, very exciting. So if you guys like these type of videos, let us know down below. Make sure to comment as well uh, if you guys want to see more builds like this. And if so, let us know what car we should do next. With all that being said, though, guys, make sure to check us out on Instagram, Naughty Auto Parts on Instagram. Make sure to check out my Instagram, Nor's Instagram, and I don't even think Nick has an Instagram, but if he does, I will go ahead and throw it up over here. Make sure to subscribe while you guys are at it. Make sure to like the video. With all that being said, guys, we will catch you guys in the next video.